damn hockey equipment and on damn AAU hockey teams and, and on hockey trips that you couldn't get your Cambria counters updated. And then you, you show up to practice and you got his little snack. The kid's 19. He's still drinking out of a juice box. He still has a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with a crust cut off. And whose team is this? Is this your team? Or is this your daddy's team? Thanks for listening to Dad Mode Podcast. Common sense parenting in a politically correct world. Here's your host, Andy Carlson. Welcome back to the Dad Mode Podcast, Common Sense Parenting in the Politically Correct World. I'm your host, Andy Carlson, at Andy Carlson Show on the Truth Machine. Now give me a follow. You like what you hear. It's usually complaining about HGTV and ranking things on Food Network, but whatever. Uh, I'm a father, and I have no idea what I'm doing, but uh, uh, you don't either there, Haas. Uh, let's try and learn something together today. I- I'm going to I'm run out of adjectives there. Uh, the website is dadmodepod.com. Twitter is at dadmodepod, or just use the hashtag dadmode to get all up in that. Uh, with me today is sidekick Uncle Nick at Nickasun on Twitter. Hey. Hey, how's it going? Uh, what are you doing? Are you busy? Oh, no, I was waiting for you to say, you, you usually say, hey, how's it going? Oh. And uh, I was waiting for you to, I don't know if you oh, hey. stopped or if you cut out. Hey. Sorry. Hey. hey. How's it going? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing good. Doing good. All right. Now, do you remember the incident? Uh, I guess it might have been a week or two ago now where um, P. Diddy was at UCLA and he swung a kettlebell at the strength and conditioning coach because uh, his son, Justin, is a defense back on the team, and the strength coach was getting on him, Justin for kind of slacking, kind of loafing, and then Diddy comes in and just basically tries to insult him with a, a weight. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, of course. That is a textbook example of helicopter parenting. And that's what we're going to talk about today is helicopter parents who uh, – it's a you said off air that you don't know what the term means, but it's basically parents who hover, hence the helicopter, over the kids are too involved in their their daily lives, and yeah, that's really about it. And it's starting to come to the forefront, and it was actually suggested to me on Facebook by uh, Dr. Kraft, one of our professors at, at Winona State, and... Uh, she pointed me to an article on Slate, which is titled "Kids of Helicopter Parents Are Sputtering Out." In that, they're these kids are getting depressed in college because they don't know how to be adult. You know, I com- I completely that 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 completely makes sense when you because it almost sounds like uh, like the parents are continually babying the kids. Um, you know, like if if they're hovering over them twenty four seven, like monitoring everything they do, and I'm sure, and I'm sure it affects the kids. That's it, it's not surprising at all. And you think that if you're too involved in your kids' lives, and yeah, you know, I, I get you want to be involved, you want to help them out with school projects, you want to be there for every single one of their events, but if you're actually doing the the homework assignment for them like if you're building the popsicle diorama of mount rainier that's a little bit too much and if you're yelling at the coach because uh little johnny is not skating on the same line as little xyz kid uh in hockey uh that's a little bit too much too hmm. that's interesting yeah now let's go to opposite of helicopter parenting like how were you raised nick uh, I was raised completely opposite. I was mostly, um, I was on my own, own a lot. Um, I'm from, uh, um, my parents were divorced, um, but living together. We'll save that for another this, uh, topic conversation another day. Um, my mother was, uh, there doing nights. Um, uh, my, my father worked nights, my mom worked days. So when I was at school or at a, a daycare, um, you know, um, I, I never saw my dad too much. Um, and uh, I, all I had was a uh, mother, typically, who uh, raised me. Mm. And you know, when she works, you know, when she works long days, you know, I, you know, she was just, you know, as long as I was doing schoolwork, she was fine. You know, she got me into some sports stuff, but you know, she wasn't, you know, really actively following. I just, just want to know that I was doing it. And 
Yeah, but you, you were the youngest, right? Did were you ever treated like the baby, the apple, the eye, etc.? Um, I don't think so. I think I was. Oh, my um... little <laughs> uh, No, um, I was a spoiled little brat from uh, what I was told as a kid. So, um, so I don't know, baby. I wouldn't say no. I'd say just you know, I I I took everything and did a lot of stuff on my own. Now. This, this is from the Slate article. Uh, quote, in 2010, psychology professor Neil Montgomery of Keene State College in New Hampshire surveyed 300 college freshmen nationwide and found that students with helicopter parents were less open to new ideas and actions and more vulnerable, anxious, and self-conscious, end quote. And I, I can see that because if the kids never had to think for themselves or um, just never had – room to think about what their own motivation is in life or do something on their own and get self-confidence from achieving those things. And when they go to college on their own, the hell are they going to do? Besides, they're going to come on me and go dad or dad. I can see them being taken advantage of by some street smart kids is what I, is what I kind of see. Yeah. And it's, um, you, I, I'm questioning the parents. I mean, do you think these parents were, were raised, you know, via helicopter parents themselves, or do you think they well, were normal? And then, obviously, then like modern, you know, times are changing. You know, modern age. You know, maybe they want to change their parenting approach and be and turn into helicopter parents. Well, it, it, it mentioned raised. in the article that the the parents' intentions were in the right place. Like they didn't nefariously want to come out and completely kneecap their children, uh, like socially or (laughs) even anything like that but they love too much you know what i mean like when you hug a child you you can squeeze too hard but you want to hugging is okay but these parents who are too involved in every single aspect of their kids lives their kids never learn any independence and they actually learn dependence on the parents and when they're thrust into uh like a faux makeup of the real world, which is college, they don't know what the hell to do. So do you think, uh, um, so you think these, the parents are unintentionally becoming helicopter parents and maybe not realizing it? Or do you think, do you think they know that that's what they're doing? Uh, I think some parents it's unintentional, like a certain percentage. It is a hundred percent unintentional. I think other parents, it's part of their psyche, their ego, how they're wired where it's almost like a um, an acknowledgement of their presence when another person is dependent on them. Uh, cause, do you remember the ooh uh, Sixth Sense? It always comes back to movies. Do you remember the movie? There was a scene where the daughter died. She was being poisoned by the mom. Yes. Uh, she was keeping her sick. See, that would be an example, I think, of a helicopter parent where uh, the parent was – so determined to be involved and keep that child dependent on her that she was poisoning the kid to make her existence, the mom's, valid and that she needed to be around to take care of the kid. So I think that's like an extremely sick example of the helicopter parenting. Now, I I don't think these parents are necessarily poisoning the kid like, uh, like one for one but maybe their actions are poisoning the kid in a way. Well, like like a, like a metaphor, or whatever. Like it's their their minds are being poisoned, and they're losing that confidence of being on their own. You know, it's it's not that physical death. I mean, sadly to say, I bet that has happened. But um, I, I think for like the study that that um you sent me here the, from Slate, you know, I I think it's all that it's psychological. Mm. They're just being tor- they're being tortured on the inside. It's that's terrible. I don't know. Um, how were you, were you raised a helicopter? Perhaps? Oh, he- hell no. Uh, I was uh, I was very hands off and uh, uh, very independent. Like uh, when uh, you know my parents were alive, it was a, pretty much a latchkey uh, kid sort of deal. But uh, then I was cooking meals on my own about twelve, thirteen for everyone because uh, yeah, I would get home if I wasn't doing sports about three, three thirty. Um, Real easy to just cook up dinner for whenever I got home at five or six, and I, I think that's the sort of independence that you want uh, in a kid. And I'm actually really glad that I got that sort of freedom leeway. Uh, didn't have a curfew, 
uh, in that they actually trusted me to make good decisions out there and do the right thing and yada yada. Whereas the helicopter over parents would drive. All right, so the kid's like 16, and, and the dad is still driving her to the movie, sitting like two rows behind her and her friends, driving them home from the movie, and that's that's a night out with your your friends as a teenager. Woohoo! Let's go to the Galleria with Dad. Yeah, everybody, hop in the Yukon. Let's go. I uh, to be fair, I don't think all kids who have helicopter parents probably turned out you know as bad as as the study says. I, I think. Uh, I bet a lot of kids do turn out. Yeah, it, it, except no, except the kids who turn out kind of normal are just giant pussies. I mean, let, let's just let's just mark that out. Giant <laughs> pussies and douchebags and everything like that, where they're so used to having everything catered to them that they just don't have any mental muscle. When it comes for doing something on their own, they're the ones that are still at 29 years old getting their credit card paid for by mommy and daddy. They're the ones that have the car in the parents' lease, the ones where the parents get rent them uh, the studio apartment, and blah blah blah. I won't lie; I would like if uh, someone helped me pay off my credit card bills. But now, see, it, it would be it. nice, except you wouldn't have any sense of accomplishment for it. I feel like this sounds like almost the uh, the plot of uh, what was it? I like Office Space when uh, when when Ron Livingston's character just didn't give a fuck anymore. I was just like, yeah, but I don't know. It's that's why that's weird. No, it's it, it all right. So it it's like training wheels uh, on a bike. Yeah, eventually. Oh yeah. All right. So the kids learn how to ride the bike. You want to have them on training wheels so that they learn the ropes, stay on the right path, and get the hang of it. But eventually those training wheels come off, say about I don't know, five, six, seven years old. I don't know how old kids are when they learn to ride bikes anymore. But imagine if the kid was riding the bike every single day and those training wheels were on until they're 18 years old. And then all of a sudden they send them off to college, take the training wheels off. See you, Junior. Bye. What do you think is going to happen? Crash and burn. They're going to crash and burn, and they're just going to blame the world and society and come running back to mommy because she has the wrench and the training wheels. <laughs> I'm picturing this right now. It's so funny. I'm great with metaphors. But you think about it. It's just uh, with my kids, uh, I want to give them independence like as their personality warrants it, right? Like, I, okay. Not gonna go the full full range parent that was in the news a couple months ago, a couple weeks ago. Uh, and, and basically, they're letting six year olds walk like two or three miles like down the street, and like that's oh, that's how we're raised. But no, if the kid, <laughs> the kid can handle it. Yeah, I, I want them to. I want them to you know, go walk down the street to the store and get a gallon of milk when they're. 12 or 10 11 12 if, if they can handle it they know to look both ways don't talk to strangers blah 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 uh don't even talk to cashier just look down no I'm just kidding uh you're talking about raising the kid as a 90s kid like how i how we were all raised i i ran errands when i was a teenager all the and time. it turned out fine i don't know tv yeah, yeah. It turned out fine. And, and plus every time that they're going out and playing with the neighborhood kids at like the park or something you don't have to be there you don't have to be watching them with the binoculars like your overly suspicious Rob Lowe. What are you well, up to? <laughs> uh, you know, it, I, you could also blame the media today just because like this people, if there's a news story like, oh, there's a kidnapper who tried to pick up some kids, you know, I mean, it's going to it freaks out parents. I think parents just and then they get overproductive about uh, see, it. See, I, I love Dateline. Dateline's one of my favorite shows, but they've completely freaked out America. Uh, also, um, because let's see, how many kids get kidnapped a year? Maybe fifty, a hundred. Out of how many kids? Millions, mm -hmm. hundreds of millions of kids. Well, maybe not hundreds, but easily tens of millions. Maybe like fifty million kids in America. Come on. Yeah, it's uh, it seems it seems rare, but yeah, it's um, but the the media loves it, and they're gonna yeah, and if there's a missing kid, Amber Alerts. 
flash all the effing time. I, I remember my phone used to light up all the time. There used to be an Amber Alert in Minnesota. It was. Am I a bad person in that it turned those off? <laughs> there, there's a way to do it, and I did it because they're kind of annoying. <laughs> like, uh, so they say, as a parent, you're supposed to commiserate with that note, but uh, I was just like, oh, someone else will get it. That's what I bet to say. <laughs> Well, I mean, like, we're not talking about, like, like the opposite of helicopter. It's not like we're letting our kids, we're not giving them the keys to the car mm. at 13 says, hey, go to the store. You know, I mean, it's it, it's that balance, you know, it's to, like, be there for the kids, but not, not, not fucking, not like, not fucking ride them, ride them to the store. You know, it's, it, it's that balance. You give them, you give them their freedoms, but you're not avoiding them. Uh, hey, kid, why don't you walk down Super America, give me a pack of smokes. Oh, not not the one in our neighborhood. Go to Robbinsdale. They got the good ones. <laughs> Save five cents. Yeah. But it's the kids with uh, you know, the parents that go to every single practice, like sporting practice. Like that that's a little bit too much. Or fill out every single form or application. Like when the kids apply into college, they should be filling out those forms themselves. It shouldn't be all like, oh, mommy and dad take care of this. So we're applying for this grant, blah, blah, blah. The kid doesn't learn anything in, in that spot. And when it's like preparing for tests, the SATs, the, at the, I understand you want to be a good parent and be involved, but you can't take the damn test for them, essentially. And there is a, a balance. And I think it's hard to see when you're in it. Like if you're too close to the situation, you're actually the parents and you can't tell when you're going overboard. And if anyone tries to interject and say you're going overboard, including your spouse, they'll be like, hey, don't tell me how to raise my kid. Except then you're going to produce a kid who is soft mentally, has never achieved a damn thing in their life, has zero confidence, and has complete codependency on you. And when you kick the bucket because you eat a lot of pork products and they're 23 and have no idea what to do, uh, they'll probably get depressed and probably take a fistful of pills and fifth of jack and call it a good game. <laughs> you really That's the kind of kid that you're raising. Paying <laughs> a really colorful picture with that G-G-L-O-L. <laughs> That's poker lingo, sorry. So, okay, so okay, let's talk about you now. So so you, you and Crystal are going to uh, raise your kid um, to not helicopter style. But let's say you slowly... Slowly becoming a little mini helipad, you know. Do, 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 do. Who's gonna? Who'll be the one to stop you? I, I would oh. be the, uh, you know, like it, it's kind of funny, uh, kind of going back on what I said earlier. But I, I feel like I would have enough self awareness to know if I'm overdoing it, and uh, I think Crystal has enough self awareness to know if she is overdoing it as well, since she's the definitely the more sane of the two of us. <laughs> and we, we've already talked about like the parents who like go way overboard uh, with parenting. It's, it's a little much. And I actually think the kid would eventually grow up kind of resenting you for being all up in their business, as they would say. Hmm. All right. Between us now, do you know any good, uh, any of our uh, local friends who might be, uh, Helicopter parenting? Hmm. Off the top of my head, no. But then again, I, I don't really keep up too much with the Joneses as far as like types of parents people are. Yeah, I, you'd have to see it in person, like besides just Facebook pictures. Uh, every parent is a helicopter parent on Facebook, technically. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And. It's always going to be the little Aiden's Jades and Cades. It always comes back to them. They're oh my God. always going to be those so al- Let's leave those kids alone. You, I think they suffered enough. I think on this podcast, I think you other ones, I think, pretty confident. You, you scared all those kids away. We're not going to have any listeners who... Good, because they're that. soft. <laughs> they are, they're like a, they're like a marshmallow Charmin. Like a Charmin marshmallow, soft. <laughs> yeah, I like to say and, puff marshmallow, man. All right, so to completely stereotype because that's what we do on the show. All right, little suburban 
mom and her little Aiden with two Y's or Jaden with two Y's or Caden with two Y's or Kazen with one Y, probably two Y's, who cares? Uh, or little Ethan, that's also a name that bugs me. All right, so when little Ethan is on the junior varsity hockey squad, uh, even though he's nine, he's a 19 year old senior because you held him back in third grade because he thought that he'd have better friends with the second graders. So he's at little junior varsity hockey practice and he's only on the JV team because you, you bugged the bejesus out of the coach to let him play a little hockey because you spent so much uh, on your damn hockey equipment and on damn AAU hockey teams and, and on hockey trips that you couldn't get your Cambria counters updated. And then you, you show up to practice and you got his little snack. The kid's 19. He's still drinking out of a juice box. He still has a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with the crust cut off. And he's got the special. It's not the store brand fruit snacks. It's the, the name brand fruit snacks. And the name brand actually escapes me right now. I don't even know what is what right now. But you're giving him his little snack in between practice because, oh, uh, little Jaden got to eat. And, and the, the little hockey coach is completely pulling his hair out because he's like, oh, God. All right, so he's not learning anything. He's interrupting practice. He's getting a little snack because he's a little soft kid, and he's not going to play anyways. Oh, wait, no, I have to play him. Otherwise, the mom's going to be all up in my grill again in the parking lot as she spills her iced coffee on uh, the seats of her, I don't know, Denali. That's what happens to little Jaden. And then the There's kid's going to go... And then the kid's going to go off to community college because, yeah. All right, that's all. <laughs> this is the plot of Mighty Ducks 4 Edina edition. Uh, and I, I just feel bad for the kids because they had never had a chance. You think, I mean, like, like any type of psychology thing, I mean, if you have a kid that's broken, you can fix this, I think. You can. Many hours if you, of therapy. If you, if, you, if, you, if you identify the problem early enough, and fix your ways. I mean, the kids can be fine. I mean, I mean, like when they go off to college, if they're as messed up as you were saying that they would be, I mean, they could meet normal college people who can, you know, man them up, you know? Well, no, in this example, little, all right, so little, uh, Aiden, let, let's see, he goes off to the U and, you know, gets a spot in the, in the dorms, except he's always going to go home on the weekends to wash the clothes, even though it's only at 10 miles down the road in Minnetonka or Wyzetta or whatever. And and this kid, the mom and her overparenting and overbearingness and helicopter parenting is set the kid up to have an Oedipus complex. So when he's 25 and is still an entry level employee because he can't get ahead because he has no interpersonal skills or self confidence, uh, when he comes home with a 45 year old um d divorcee mother of three adult children girlfriend uh the mom can't say lip because she set him up <laughs> that's, that's exactly that's, what she set him up for oddly specific um <laughs> that's a, and, and also that. what bugs me are so to completely pull one eight like the helicopter parents we, we I, I saw a really good cartoon about this where it was parents in previous generations and ours included would be uh, junior has bad grades and they're at a p parent teacher conference and they're yelling at the kid, which is how it should be. Uh, whereas, and the next panel was today, junior has bad grades. They're at the parent teacher conferences and they're yelling at the teacher. And then the little kid has this smug, smug ass look on his face. And that's exactly how it is. Oh because yeah. Yeah. Our child could never do any wrong. That's my child. You know, the parents are the ones who are doing it wrong. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. I hate this. I already hate this. Because I know I'm going to have to contend with, like, the moms who are, like, raising the little, the little Aidens. You're going to have to eventually teach your daughter that, that there are going to be parents who are raising their kids like that. So you're going to have to maybe, uh, you know, train little Muggsy to, um, you know, identify these kids and, you know, maybe slowly help them out, you know? See, when Muggsy is 16, I don't want her to date the ultra soft Ethan who, or Aiden, who's going to be picking her up in her, in his mom's like infinity or whatever. And you know, that kid's going to be driving that in college. Also, I don't want her riding off 
on the back of a Harley of some dude with uh, like a face tattoo. I, I think there's probably a balance in there. Yeah, yeah. You went to like two really, really polar opposite extremes there. Like, I, I just want a kid who is has self confidence, uh, is respectful, has a part time job at the grocery store, or does like landscaping in the summer because that's um, a really hard, good summer work for a kid. And it's just stuff like that. I mean, yeah, Muggsy will really enjoy that landscaping job. Bringing the money. Actually, no, maybe you should get a better paying job. It's all going to be about computers in the future. It's gonna uh, be like compu- a- computers are going to put up landscaping. Yeah. Actually, that's robots, that's probably man. true. Hey, robot, oh, robots. why don't you put up that retaining wall for me? <laughs> All right. Uh, we have any closing thoughts on helicopter parents? Because I'm actually kind of spent because it pisses me off. <laughs> um, this it's it's about it's a balance. It's a to raise good kids. It's about a balance, and I know this because I'm not raising any kids right now. It's about balancing the overprotectiveness of being a parent, and then allowing your child to have personal freedoms to to develop and become unique children because you want your children you want your child to be unique and be able to make decisions but also safe but you know you you want them to do this on their own and that's how you have unique individuals out there and you know when you have overzealous parents who are hovering over them constantly which i've now actually finally understood the whole helicopter thing because that's what they do they hover you know that you know it's about balancing balancing it all out and i get that parents just want the best for their kids but the best for their kids is going to let them go out and fail sometimes. Go out and let them learn from the mistakes. Let them get their nose bloodied a little bit. Metaphorically, I don't want your kids to go out and get punched in the face like UFC 189 last night, which is pretty awesome. Um, but and, and overall, you can do too much by suffocating your kids. And as they grow up, I think they'll resent you for that, where you're – you are treating them like a little kid, as the cliche line goes. And, you know, they're not going to be little kids forever, and you shouldn't treat them as such. Will they resent you for it, or will they be too messed up to, like, they'll be like, no, no, mom, dad's always right. Always right. I, I think it could go either way, where the kid grows up and at 40 years old is still living in your pool house and is completely dependent on you, or 18 out of the house, completely rebels and cuts off communication. You never talk to a man. Hmm. I can see that. Okay. That is all. Uh, ending on a more positive note, a little Amazon action. Nick, besides the, the visor and the movies, what is the next thing you're going to buy at Amazon? Gosh, make me go through all my wish lists right now. Yep. I'm trying to leave stuff for a surprise. Um, I always need uh, more music equipment. I've I've always bought uh, my musical equipment on on Amazon. Uh, if I ever need uh, extra capos or guitar tuners, I always use them. So, what what's the next uh, music video tribute that you're gonna put on the YouTube's? Um, I might. I don't know. I was thinking of some songs I'm gonna record later today. Um, might stay uh, classic rock. You know, uh, my. I think I have uh, maybe another Van Morrison song. Or... Uh, Red Bone, come and get your love. I'll see if I can learn that. We'll see. Come and get your love. Their only hit. <laughs> it's a good one. Ever. And you know what? They wouldn't have achieved that hit if they had helicopter parents. They would not have had the wherewithal to go out and achieve. Hmm. Boom. And anything you want to buy, whether it be... You know, music equipment like Nick, or maybe how about a, ooh, how about a Root Bones Greatest Hits? It's only one track, but get it at Amazon through our link. Go to dadmopod.com uh, and click on our little box top left corner. It'll take you to Amazon, bookmark that, and just buy all the crap that you're normally going to buy, anyways. Gives us a little taste, keeps the dad mode pod ship going forward. But we're out of here. Uh, say goodbye, Nick. Goodbye, Nick. He's at Nick his son on the Twitter machine. Show's available on iTunes. Give us a rate. Give us a review. Give us a subscribe. Show a lot of love. We already got a bunch of rate and reviews on there, and uh, we need some more. We're bas- we're five stars, Nick. You should look that up. I will. I'll we're look we're doing good. Uh, follow us on Twitter at DadModePod or me at Andy Carlson Show. Website is DadModePod.com. 
be a man, be a father, go dad mode. Don't be a helicopter parent. Be a bat wing parent or bat copter. Or, <laughs> yeah, do that. See you next time. Think the episode you just heard is worth a dollar? Well, send it our way. Visit dadmodepod.com slash support to find out how. Be a man, be a father. Go dad mode. The music is created and produced by Deeb. To hear more of his tracks, visit soundcloud.com slash Deeb.